In this movie I want to talk about uh, implosion of cylinders under uh, an external pressure like you see here. Uh, if you have got an internal vacuum in uh, a cylinder or uh, a lower pressure then the pressure on the outside will be bigger than the pressure on the inside so then you get an, an implosion in the cylinder like you see here and here. These are uh, good examples of an imploded cylinder and an imploded tank. So in that case when something is slender and under a pressure then you shouldn't look like here I've, I've set up a model in SOLIDWORKS you shouldn't look at the Vermeese stress like you usually do uh, usually you look at this stress when a, 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 a part is under stress a uh, tensile stress and then you can judge whether or not it fails but in this case this cylinder will not fail because of the Vermeese stress but because of buckling like we see in the in the pictures so what should we look at then then you have to look at uh, the principal stresses in SOLIDWORKS so I've already created these plots I can show you how you define it you create a stress plot there's uh, several options over here the Vermeese stress is the default stress to plot for SOLIDWORKS because it predicts when a, a metal part will fail under a, a tensile stress uh, the stress intensity is more appropriate for the same situation but, but then for a brittle material so this one is for a ductile material for Mises and for a brittle material it's stress intensity and then you've got uh, several shear stresses that you can plot but the most important for buckling is the first second and third principal stress so I'm gonna have a look at that in this model and then I plot them as a a vector plot. I'll show you how I take P1 show as vector plot you see here and then you get a plot with arrows here you hardly see anything so I've adjusted the vector settings a little increased the arrow size of these vectors and then here we see the first principal stress that I've created but still it's quite useless at first glance you see some arrows that are in perpendicular direction to the wall of the cylinder is because uh, the first principal stress is always the, the largest stress and tensile stress is defined in a positive way so a negative stress like you see here in the blue arrows is a compressive stress and then P1 is the biggest stress but since here all directions are under compression so the other two directions as well because of this pressure external pressure on the cylinder it's uh, causing the whole cylinder to have pressure uh, a pressure stress in every location of the model. You see it here because when P1 shows a blue arrow so it's negative then P2 and P3 should be smaller. So P1 is always the biggest in size in, in, uh, in size when you look also at the negative value so P1 is the largest when I look at this one I will see blue arrows that will be more negative as you can see here. And then the P3 will be the, the most negative values for pressure. So this one looks pretty useless and actually it pretty much is. It shows the stress in the wall thickness direction of this part. What is useful in this case is the third and second principal stress. First I'll look at the second one. It is in this direction and it is logical that it's a compressive stress because when there's a negative force on this top over here then the top will be pushing down and there will be a, a compressive stress in the wall of this part same goes for the first principal stress it goes in the I'm oh sorry for the third principal stress I should say it goes in the, the circular direction of this thin walled cylinder actually I created a, a bit of a bigger walled cylinder to, to uh, show these results in a nice way because when I look at the images over here you see the, the top and the bottom they have uh, stronger uh, structures attached to them so there it will not buckle and to analyze that I created a bigger wall thickness on the top and a smaller wall thickness over here to be able to look at the results of the principal stress in this area because when I look at the, the first principal stress for example I see that there are some tensile forces let me have a look for example this one I think shows it nicely in the top here there's a bit of a an expansion which causes a tensile stress so here is a positive value it's a tensile stress 
and the blue arrows show a very negative value so there's a, a compressive stress over there so whenever you look at buckling you shouldn't use the Vermeese stress you should only look at that when there's tensile stresses in the part or when it's a bulky structure so uh, buckling doesn't have any effect but if, if it's a thin walled cylinder a thin walled structure then you should look at the, the principal stresses to judge whether or not a part will fail so that's what I wanted to show for this video looking at uh, these kind of failed structures